Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how to recreate slash reset a raid array that's running on a Synology and this more or less pertains to people who are running uh, Xpenology and in my case I'm running Xpenology on VMware and the volumes that back it are backed by iSCSI. The iSCSI array crashed momentarily and of course led to the disk being marked as quote crashed even though it's not crashed. So first thing you do is actually enable SSH access and once you've done that go ahead and get your root password make sure you have it make sure you have it handy with the user password and first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and um, CD down to USR you can see right, 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 right it's kind of, kind of go through what I've done so CD down to USR and then sudo unmount um, volume one you have to change directory because in the current directory that's, that's part of one of the directories that, that are that will stop it from letting you unmount it so once you're in some sort of other directory go ahead and unmount volume one and then uh, I went ahead and did, I forgot to do this first, but the, the uh, cat four slash proc four slash MD stat, which will give me all the devices on the array. You see, this is the one that's failed. MD two, this array unit is actually one with the issue. So then what we're going to do, as you can see, I went ahead and uh, I just kind of poked around because I couldn't exactly figure which one with which device was mapped. So just did DS uh, DS setup remove and then dev mapper four slash volume two. I think is the one that this actually resides on. I just kind of poked around until I got the right one. It, just poke around to get to the point where we're actually able to do the MD admins uh, stop forward slash uh, the device. So see right there, I did the uh, so basically, oh yeah, see right there, right here, sudo sudo dm setup remove dev mapper, and then kind of just got one. So I got the two, I think it was uh, one, yeah, so one was the one that I was actually trying to get. And once I did, the reason why I don't know which one is which because the volumes, are, the numbers are all with mishy mash, mishy wash, because of the amount of drives that went in and out of their server, that all the numbers are kind of getting jumbled. But once you've actually did that and it comes back as saying that the volume is actually removed, it's, it's actually been unmapped, which you have to do for this particular DSM array. Then I went ahead and do md admin for slash uh, space dash dash stop dev md2, which remove, which actually stops the uh, that actual particular rate unit. You had to do sudo on that. And you see now it says stop. Now we can move into the next step, which now we've actually stopped the unit. We can actually now actually recreate it, which is the part where we have to do. This is the kind of the scary part. You got to be careful when you're doing this. So, so do md admin space dash dash verbose, so you can see it doing it. Then do create forward slash right here. So it's important that you pull this up so you can see what your configuration is. So you can copy. You need to copy this exactly so it doesn't have an issue. But you can see md admin for dash dash uh, verbose space create forward slash dev md2, which is the one right now we're trying to recover, which is md2 space. And then do uh, double dash level equals and then kind of recreate this is going from exact ones over here this is raid one so it's going to be raid one and then in my case my mine has a mine is only a single device one it should be a basic disk but that actually is how Synology d determines they want to do basic disk with raid one which is very annoying but you have to do that if it's a basic disk this is a direct pass so like I said this this is not this is backed by our storage array so there's no reason for Synology to have any sort of involvement in this and then once you do that, go ahead and type in the actual disk, which is up there. So it's dev, going back here, which is uh, dev sdbd, sd, sdb3. And if I just, I also you need to do double dash metadata. Equals, and then copy the metadata up here, which is 1.2. Push enter. Um, now you see, it's going to say unusual. For this, in my case, it's going to say unusual because I... I do have an unusual, that's how Synology, did. yet again, that's how Synology wants to do basic disks, is they want to do is RAID 1, with that single disk, so we have to tell force. You're going to copy and put double dash force on the end, if you're in my particular case, forgot the sudo in front. It's going to have from a root password, let's go ahead and copy that. Now, it's telling us that it's already part of an array, make sure that all those are exactly the same, RAID 1, one device, creation time doesn't matter. Be curious, right? So once you've done this thing, you're okay. Go ahead and tell yes. It's going to say it's been now has been started. Now to verify that it's actually exactly the same, let's go ahead and run the proc command again to make sure that everything comes back fine. You can see right there. Now it says you, which means that it's perfectly a okay. It means there's, the error the error has now been resolved and it now should be able to be used. So we can go ahead and type in reboot. Oh, oh, pseudo reboot. And go over here. Pull the Synology system back up. And 
and uh, I should have another window which is right over here. There it is. You can see right here now it's booting it, which is actually monitoring the serial console. So right there, it's quickly going through all the stuff. In a second, we just see a login prompt, which is what we want, which we know that it actually booted it once we see a login prompt. It's getting there. It seems like refresh the screen a few times. And it's getting there. It's probably doing some verification. Let's go ahead and refresh, see if it's actually saying anything. Yes, it's saying starting, service is starting, so there you go. Now it's actually starting up, you see we're waiting for the service to start. Once the service is actually started, then we can actually go ahead and say that it is uh, ready. I still have to finish fixing this error, because it was caused by a disk that failed. Well, a external disk that was mapped, and it was having a lot of scuzzy stuff going on. It caused the entire server to crash, because that disk just pretty much as, as, as if the drive just completely just vaporized off the server, in, to what it considered it. Because the, vo the volume, the disk just basically crashed completely. The disk already had issues, but it well, it just it decided, to, decided to fuck off. So I actually had to remove that drive before I leave today because I need to make sure that that thing that this will not happen again. So I'm waiting for this guy to finish saying it's starting the services, and we should be able to log in, and we should see that it should no longer be saying there is a failed volume. And I'll show you here it is. Here's the window. You can see it's actually way where we can't. I'm not gonna log in until it says it's ready. Oh, it's ready because we would just see a little pop of the bottom saying that it's uh, restricted. It's saying it's uh, still starting. Now I have not got an email alert, which is a very important thing. I don't say I have not heard any dings indicating that there's nothing fucking going on. So we take a look in our storage. We'll see we have a green check mark and the storage is all still the same. You can see that we didn't lose any data. You see volume 1 is still there, volume 2 is there, we go ahead and pull up the control panel, which you see is still serving, it should be A-OK. -okay. Yep, all our volumes are there, and I'm going to go ahead and refresh my desktop, and that should come back up. Because one way I definitely noticed that I was, I was not able to write any settings on my, my storage, my, my volumes. It's still saying I can't write, but let's go ahead and reopen that, that's weird if it's still saying I can't write to it. Uh, it's probably something I'm looking to, but it, uh, we've now fixed that alert, and now it seems to be allowing us to actually work with it again, which is super. All right, so yeah, it just, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I'm able to write because I just, I just went ahead and deleted the file. Watch this and go ahead. And I can, I can still see. I'm actually still seeing maybe I could do things, so I can do this. And actually, into the trash can. Yeah, so that's how you fix it. So hopefully you fix your rate, your storage rate. So see you guys in a few.